and the glittering scales, which are really red and not golden, arrives in London. Now watch their price rocket on the exchanges. The sun shines on the royal bride. Tempered with sadness is the occasion when the Lady Alice Scott, so recently bereaved, leaves her home at number two Grosvenor Place for the short bridal drive down Constitution Hill to Buckingham Palace. But the crowd thinks only of the joy of this wedding day and cheers with happy sincerity the Duchess of Gloucester to be as the glass carriage conveys her with her brother, the new Duke of Buccleuch, to the chapel at the palace where the marriage is consecrated. The privacy consequent on the death of the bride's father dictated that no picture should be taken of the ceremony itself in the small chapel. But after the service, the bride and bridegroom appear on the balcony, hand in hand, and receive a delighted acclamation from the big throng below. Then, the king and queen join their son and daughter-in-law and renewed cheers, mindful that this is jubilee year, greet their majesties. For Princess Margaret Rose on this occasion, a stool is provided so that the little bridesmaid may see over the balcony and the screen again is witness to a charming picture of the king with his grandchildren, reminiscent of that memorable vignette of His Majesty lifting up the little princess to see the crowd at the Duke of Kent's wedding. You will agree that the Duchess makes a lovely figure in her wedding dress of satin, with the high neckline finished by a cluster of traditional orange blossom at the throat. The full beauty of the dress is apparent in the wedding group taken by the court photographers before the wedding breakfast, which was attended by 150 guests. And now, in an intimate scene, the bride and bridegroom make their departure from the forecourt of the palace, pelted with rose leaves by their excited relatives and friends. In an open carriage, the Duke and his Duchess drive from Buckingham Palace to St Pancras. This is London's chance to see and cheer the royal pair. And the cancellation of a Westminster Abbey wedding is partially compensated by the length of the procession through the heart of the city to the station. True, the Duchess is not wearing her wedding dress. But it's the beginning of a honeymoon, and neither you nor I are, I hope, too old to feel that sense of romance as the young bride and bridegroom pass on their way conscious of their happiness. At the station, the last episode of this wedding day is enacted. Scattering rose leaves, the Duke and Duchess step from the carriage and acknowledge the congratulations of officials. Bride's relatives have followed them to the platform, and one charming little snapshot is of a small bridesmaid kicking up the petals which have fallen from the carriage. And so, let us wish them farewell and a happy honeymoon. A proud future and pleasure in those public duties which the royal family perform with so much grace and dignity. <laughs>